Hi, I'm Paul with Gomez Landscape and Tree Care, certified tree care safety professional. And this is Gilbert, president of the company. He's a certified arborist, climber, and tree risk assessment qualified. Today's topic is chipper safety. And if you look right behind you, we have a wood chipper. Now, this is a safety video, so let's reiterate safety. I'm wearing safety glasses, helmet, I have ear protection, and gloves. And if you adhere to the ANSI Z133.1, that is the American National Standard Institute for Arboriculture, you should know exactly what is required. So Gilbert, why don't you start by letting our viewers know what tools and building materials are needed to construct our push stick. Good morning, everyone. So to start, we're gonna need a push rod. With, this is a four foot, inch and a quarter rod. Two by six lumber some epoxy, a drill, drill bit, 3 16 inch and a quarter auger bit, marker, tape measure, and a brush, inexpensive brush. That's pretty much all you need to build the push stick that we're gonna build here today. Push stick that's gonna keep you and your employees safe when operating a chipper. So we're gonna start first by getting the lumber that we need, the two by six. You're gonna measure the two by six, and I found that 14 inches in length is a good size to work with. It's not too heavy, it's not too small. So we're gonna measure the two by six to 16, 14 inches. We're gonna measure the two by six to 14 inches. And you're gonna use a miter saw to cut your lumber. You don't have a miter saw? Simple hand saw will do. Your protection. Now this is a uh, piece of lumber that we found in our yard, so it's gonna work perfectly fine. Uh, when you build these push sticks, you want to build 15, 20 of them at a time. Why is that? Well, you're going to go through them pretty quick. Sometimes they'll last you a day or two. And uh, if you get lucky, you might uh, have it last you two months. Two months. Um, so you want to build, a, I don't know, 15, 20 of them so that they last you for uh, a good portion of the year. And you don't have to continue building them every couple of days. Um, so. Once you get this measured, then you're going to get your drill and the quarter inch auger bit. When you use this auger bit, you want to drill down approximately two thirds to three quarters of the way. And again, you can just eyeball this. Hold it firm and drill down. Once you've done that, what I like doing is, I, the reason I use the drill bit is so that when you place your rod into this hole, you're gonna use epoxy. And the epoxy, you'll tend to have a hard time pressing it in if you don't drill some holes on the sides and allow the epoxy to come up through the sides. So I'm gonna drill these holes on the side here. I see you're creating, uh, you're releasing tension in the wood. Now what I did there is it's I like drilled. you created a chimney. Exactly. What I did there, I drilled. I drilled a, a, a hole on each side of this auger bit hole, and when I press my rod into the wood, you're gonna allow the air to push through the holes, and your epoxy is gonna lock everything in place. So now I'm gonna get my epoxy. 
And this is a standard epoxy from Home Depot. So we're going to fill in the reservoir with epoxy. About, what does that look like? Not 100% exactly, but about 60% of fill. You're going to then take your rod and you're going to push it into the hole. As you can see, the epoxy now comes in through the sides. That's really going to help it bind, isn't it? And it locks everything in place. What I like doing is adding a little bit more really around the perimeter. Really reinforcing it, huh? The reason I use this brush, I have this brush, is to just work it around the rod and be generous with it. This epoxy locks everything in place nicely. So again, you want to build 15, 20 of these at a time. So this epoxy is enough for approximately 15 units. So have, you know, a cheapy brush, have your epoxy, have a couple pieces of uh, two by six ready and 15, 20 of these rods uh, as well. Now Gilbert, what's special about this? What did we not use? So what we did not use what was metal. Be. Exactly. There's no screws here. Uh, like I said, this rod is not going to last you forever. What's going to happen is uh, at some point, a branch is going to snag it from your hands and the chipper is going to swallow it. And uh, you don't have to worry about any pieces of metal in this. It's all lumber, it's all wood. It's not going to damage your blades. You want to have bed knives, uh, you want to have any knives that are damaged when uh, using this uh, push stick. And it's uh, really going to keep you and your crew safe. Now, the outcome is this. You give it a couple of hours to uh, cure, maybe a day or so, and you have a nice uh, push stick that you can use uh, to push the material into the chipper. So we're going to now uh, demonstrate how to use this push stick uh, safely. All right, here we are. There's our wood chipper, and we want to quickly show you before we make our dem final demonstration on our essentials. You want, our, you want your employees to actually use these tools, so they got to be accessible. And we got a really uh, you know, special modification here where we keep our push stick, simple uh, leaf rake, push broom, hard rake, a pitchfork, and a special landscape scoop for that small debris. So this is it. This is, this is the essentials and it's accessible and there's actually no excuse not to use them. They're not stored away in the truck. They're right here. Easy to use if, in, the, in fact, the time comes where you actually need your push stick. Okay, here we go. We're ready to do a simple dry run, but uh, there's a lot to know. There's a lot to know to a wood chipper, but that's a totally different segment. So right now, what we're gonna do is is kind of basically just run through the, the, the simple basics of operating a wood chipper. Uh, of course, uh, we need to understand, you need to understand that no foreign objects can be in the feeder prior to operating a chipper. You should be aware that the chute is clear of any foreign objects as well. Um, and when running a chipper, you should you know, turn it on and let it idle, warm up, and go into the motions of, of engaging the clutch safely. But right now, I wanna turn the attention to uh, President Gilbert, and he's gonna do a, uh, the, the, basically the don'ts of, of feeding a chipper and the whole concept behind the push stick. So Gilbert, why don't you walk over to this uh, chipper here, and, and the chipper, of course, is off. Uh, we don't wanna give you a, a, a we don't want to give you the exact demonstration under normal conditions because that would just be unsafe. But Gilbert's going to show you what not to do when you encounter yourself with small brush that would otherwise put you in a very compromising situation. Now again, safety. So I'm wearing my helmet, my ear protection, glasses, and gloves. This is a perfect example of the type of material that requires you to push in. And what you don't wanna do 
is, is stand in the middle of the chipper while it's running and lean over like this and push the material past the curtain. The reason that we use the push stick is to prevent this, to keep you safe, to keep you behind the curtain, to keep you in the dangerous position here. So where you do want to be is you want to be to the side. You want to feed the material off to the side, away from the front. <clears throat> and so the push stick allows you to simply push the material into the chipper from a safe distance. The further away you are, the better. So that's the reason why this uh, push stick is so effective and has really uh, produced for us. Um, not only is this keeping your employees safe, but it also is more efficient. Uh, it keeps you at a distance where you can quickly push the material into the chipper and uh, maintaining safety. And again, it, it, he mentioned efficiency. It's really engineered to really do that. I mean, this space right here is doing so much and the force behind it of you actually pushing it is making the job more efficient. So there you go, the push stick. It's gonna help you mitigate risk. It's gonna help the industry keep our insurance low because this is one of the most dangerous industries and there's not enough information out there, but here it is. And we hope you take this seriously and really hope you put this to use, to practice, because we do every single day. And it is our company policy that our employees use this every single day and they don't put themselves in harm's way.